across church, a beautiful day for family to be one more time, to gather online. It's a beautiful day in this Christmassy season, a Christmassy day for the right reason to meet one more time, to gather online. I have always wanted to gather with family just like you. I've always wanted to attend the same service as you. But let's make the most of this Christmas play and experience Jesus in a simpler way. Family of mine, it's about time to hear about my Savior. Family, join me please. Let's let it be. Simply Christmas. Hello, family. <laughs> As adults, have you ever thought that we overcomplicate things? I know I do that sometimes. That's why I love the innocence of children and the way that they see the world. So today, I'd like to let a very special group of children from the house church help me to explain the Christmas story in their eyes and in their voices. Joseph. He was going to get married to Joseph. God sent an angel to tell Mary that he was going to have a baby. And then Mary um, told it um, that, um, what's it say? Um, Mary um, told Joseph that he was going to have a baby. And the angel told Joseph. And then the angel said, it's true. The angel said, all things, all things are possible with God. And then there was a sentence in the back of him. And Mary was riding on the donkey. They said that they were going to find a hotel. And they were looking for a place to stay. And there was no place. That made them really, really sad. And then they had to stay the night um, and have the babies with the animals in the bar. And there was a lot of animals. They can get fat. Kids. Me. <laughs> Came out of her belly. I don't know how. Then they had, um, then they had a bucket, a bucket, and they laid baby Jesus, and it was some hay. And we was, and I was a baby. Now that baby sister, I'm full. Where my one leg? Why they was there, uh, the angel, God sent the angel to the shepherd. The shepherd fed, fed the sheep. But <laughs> And then a lot of angels were singing and dancing and worshiping God. And then they told the shepherd, don't be afraid. They told the shepherds, Go to the barn. There was a king born, uh, and God put a big star in the sky, and the uh, the shepherds know there was a new king born. And then they followed the star to Bethlehem. They went to the stable and saw baby Jesus. And the freeze wise man was falling to a doll. The wise men brought spices for him to make taco sandwiches. They put seasoning on the bottom and on the top. And then put glue in on the top and you eat the glue. <laughs> Gold, fancy, say, and more. 
I don't know what's in them. Presents? I'll I put it. Get the open presents. Jesus' his birthday. And I love Santa. I like Santa. It's Jesus' dead birthday. Jesus' birthday. It's about Jesus' Jesus' birthday. And Santa's sneaking in the feet with the house. <laughs> Running present.
You know, I've learned a lot of lessons in my life, and one of those lessons was when I made a visit to the children's ministry at the house church. And let me tell you about that lesson. I can sum it up in one word, humility. Our celebrity guest today is Mr. Rogers. Hi, kids. Pulled that off. Well, that didn't go quite as planned. It's a little bit on the awkward side. So that didn't go quite as I had planned, but he said okay. It was fine. Well, let me tell you, that was definitely a learning experience. I made the mistake of thinking that that visit was going to be all about me. And boy, was I wrong. And I have a question. Have you ever gotten something wrong? Maybe during this season, the last couple of months, you've got so wrapped up in the whole holiday, who to go visit, buying presents, that you've lost the true focus on the meaning of Christmas? My dear friends, Missy and Wiley are going to sing us a song, and let's open our hearts and truly listen to the words and think about their meaning. Let the 
Wasn't that beautiful? There's another thing about children that I love, and that's that they like to pretend. But one thing that I've also known is us adults, we like to pretend too, but for different reasons. Trolley, let's go take a visit to see my friends Mike and Daniel Tiger in the neighborhood of Make Believe. Hey, Daniel Tiger, what are you doing? I'm pretending that I'm a brave knight slaying a mighty dragon. Whoa, whoa. Easy there, buddy. Uh, yeah, you look pretty tough, all right. So, uh, hey, Daniel, can I tell you something? Sure, Mike, what's up? Well, if I could be real honest, sometimes I feel like I'm the one pretending. What do you mean? Isn't that a good thing? No, not like I'm doing. Sometimes I just feel like I'm a pretend Christian. I mean, I, I come to church on Sundays, I sing all the songs, and I put a big smile on my face like everything's okay. But everything's not okay. I'm worried about losing my job, stressed about my finances and this whole COVID thing. I'm just not doing well, and I'm tired of pretending. I'm sorry, Mike. I didn't know you were going through all this. Here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, apparently now I'm telling all my problems to a puppet. <laughs> uh, 
I just, I don't know what to do. Mike, you have to look to the source of inner peace. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, let your requests be made known to God. So the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Mike, are you confessing all your problems to God? Not exactly. Mm-hmm. Hold on a second. Ow! <laughs> What'd you do that for? The Bible states it clearly, so why are you keeping everything inside? Uh, I don't know. I'm just... Are you in a family group? Not exactly. Ow! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll get plugged into a family group. Just stop hitting me with that sword. This is serious, Mike. This isn't the neighborhood of make-believe. Well, actually, you can't. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. God takes this serious, Mike. In Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, Jesus says, These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules they have been taught. I, yeah, I hear you. Um, I just need to stop being a make-believe Christian and fully surrender to him. What do I do now? God says to repent and then fully commit yourself to him. Cool. Oh, oh, you mean like right now? Okay, yeah, I knew that. Uh, okay, here it goes. God, I'm sorry for pretending and not fully surrendering to you. Please forgive me and help me put my faith and trust in you alone. May your Holy Spirit lead me and guide me in everything I do. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and the eternal purpose that you've placed in me. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm proud of you, Mike. Thanks, Daniel. And you're not half bad for a puppet. But, uh, all right, buddy. I think I'm gonna get on out of here. See you later. All right, see ya. Oh, oh, wait, come back. One more thing. Yeah? Show me your phone real quick. Uh, okay, my phone. All right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, yep, uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, this, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, just as I thought, you don't have the house app yet. Ow, okay, okay, I'll download the app. Ah, getting beat up by a puppet. Humans. some point in our life, we put a mask on and we pretended that everything was just fine. But I'm glad he realized where his error was, with a little help from Daniel Tiger and, of course, his complete surrender to God. Stand with us as we worship our risen Lord on this day, of, as we celebrate this day of his mir miraculous birth.
wasn't over because from that point on that we had to do all kinds of things and we had to work and we had to sacrifice animals and there had to be certain animal blood to cover the multitude of sins and, and but God knew that just wasn't right there was something missing see that there had to be an ultimate sacrifice there had to be a perfect blood that could cover the multitude of our sins so instead of killing us God just chose to do something else he chose to give up the ultimate sacrifice. He chose to give up his one and only son. God chose to come into this earth through the birth of Jesus. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that through Jesus came life, came grace, came mercy, came forgiveness, came redemption and restoration and salvation. And if you're here today and you've never heard of Jesus, if, you've, if you're here today, you don't even know what we're talking about today. That's okay, because I just want to share a little bit about the man that I've come to know as Lord, but the person that I've come to know as friend, because Jesus was born out of, of a virgin, and he lived a perfect life, a sinless life. He loved people. He hung out with all kinds of people. Matter of fact, many of the people that the world called outcast and weren't even good enough for it, Jesus would spend time with them. He fed people. He healed people. He saved people. Even before he asked them to do anything else, he restored them. And then he put 12 of his closest friends around him because Jesus knew and God knew that his birth ultimately led to the cross. He spent his three and a half years with 12 men and, and they were learning from Jesus and learning from how he lived his life and then came that one moment that Jesus was betrayed. One of his closest friends handed over to be beat and whipped. He had a crown of thorns dug into his head. The Bible says he was beat so bad you couldn't even recognize him as a man. He was whipped 39 times with a cat of nine tails that was ripped with glass and bone and metal and every time it hit his back it would rip his flesh and he was hung on a cross he was nailed to a cross not because he, he did something wrong but because of what we did Jesus chose to take our place so that we would forever be in eternity with him and then he was put in a tomb and three days later he rose from the grave and at that moment he conquered death, he conquered sin and hell. And here's, here's the kicker, here's how much God loves you. He gave up all of this at just the hope, at just the hope that me and you and all of mankind would respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit and we would feel that tugging of our heart and we would come to know him as Savior. See, that's what Jesus came, he came 
to save us. His birth, he came to save us. And maybe you're here and you're just like Mike. Maybe you've been pretending. Maybe you've been living a life and you go to church and you've said the prayer a hundred times, but you really haven't surrendered your life to God and you have no peace and you have no hope. And I'm telling you, today's the day. And it doesn't matter if you're here for the first time and you're ready to give your life to Christ or you're ready to rededicate your life. It's the same. Romans 10, 9 says that you must confess him as Lord. We've got to surrender true lordship of our life to him. And why wouldn't we want to surrender to a God who died for you? you can trust with your whole life and then it says and believe in your heart that he is who he says he is that he's the Messiah that he's the Savior that he died on the cross for our sins and then it says that you will be saved God will never force himself upon anybody he's only sitting there and he says behold I stand at the door and knock what does that mean you feel the tugging right now there's a warm there's something going on that you know that he's knocking on your door he says, if anybody will open up that door, will open up their heart, I'll come in and I'll live with them. I don't care about their behavior. I don't care about the shape that they're in. I don't care. I just want you. If you'll just let me, if you'll invite me in, and the rest will work on. Because I came to save you, Jesus said. I came to forgive you of all your sins. You'll never be good enough. You'll never go to church enough. You'll never give enough. You'll never be good enough. For my love, Jesus says it's a free gift. So if you're here, here in a second, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And if you feel that tugging on your heart, mean it. Mean it when you say it, and I promise you, it's his promise that as far as the east is from the west, he'll remember your sins no more. And that your name will be written in the Lamb Book of Life. If you're ready to rededicate your life, say this prayer with me, family. Say, Jesus, today I confess you as Lord. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for being born. Thank you for the life that you lived, the example that you set. But Jesus, more than anything, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Forgive me and become Lord and leader. And Jesus, as best as I know how, I'm going to live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. And everybody says, amen. Come on, house family, let's put your hands together. Come on, it's a joyous day. It's a great day. There's new life, new hope has been given to people. People came in one way, they're leaving another way, but I'm not done because I want us to worship a little more. I don't know about you, but it's a joyous day, amen? So let's act like joyous. Let's lose our brain, put your hands together, and sing. Make a beautiful noise. Come on, let's worship. Joy to the world.
seconds of your best praise break in this place. Come on, magnify the name of all names. He's for you and not against you. He came into the world for you. As far as the east is from the west, he's for you and not against you. We worship you, the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. Well, hey, have you had a good day at the house church today? Yeah. Hey, real quick, will you do me a favor? Will you give it up for Mr. Rogers, the one and only Paul Thompson? TJ, he'll be doing autographs for $100 an autograph. Uh, it's going to be legit. It's all good. Hey, how about our amazing tech team back there, our video crew? Pastor Kelly, great job on this. Oh, Lord, how about our worship team? Man, you guys were amazing. Great job. Give it up for Mike Dyson and Gabe Harry for Daniel Tiger. What a great job. Oh, how about the Herring family, man? A family singing in Wiley and Missy Room. Woo, man. Well, hey, house family, we love you guys. Man, this is all about Christmas. We do this for Jesus more than anything else. A couple announcements for you. Remember, 21 days of prayer and fasting is fastly approaching. Uh, make sure you download our app. Make sure you're preparing, asking God, what is it that you want me to sacrifice? What is it that you want me to lay down for 21 days so I can get as close to you as we start 2021? Uh, also, if you gave your life to Christ today, man, praise God. I'll be up here for a few minutes. Uh, I would love to take just a few minutes of your time just to talk to you about what's next and how we can partner with you. I uh, also want to go ahead and pray over our offering. Thank those of you who are faithfully given. Uh, I'm going to pray. There's two mailboxes on each side. Father, thank you so much for the Christmas story. God, thank you that you love us enough. Instead of killing us, you chose to save us. God, you chose to birth yourself through this person of Jesus Christ. And that he lived on this earth for us and he died for us. And Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for the grace and the mercy and the salvation that we have through Jesus. And Lord, as we go through this week, God, as we go about our lives and our busyness, may we never forget the reason celebrate. God, help us take time to spend with you. God, help us enjoy our family and our friends. And God, as we open presents, may we let our families know why we do what we do. God, we love you. We thank you. God, we lift up everybody in here that is giving. Lord, we don't give because we have to. We give because we want to, Father. Yeah, it's out of obedience to you, Lord. But God, you've done so much for us. God, that we want to be part of what you're doing in this generation, in this time right now. God, we want every your moving, wherever your Holy Spirit is going, we want to be going with you. So, Father, I lift up everybody who gives. I pray that they know that they're in a covenant relationship with you. Father, that they can trust you with their life. They can trust you with their finances, with their families, with their marriages. God, that you are for them and not against them. Father, I just pray that open doors will be open in their lives. Close the ones that need to be closed, Lord. And Father, we live to serve you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, amen. Well, how's it? We love you guys. God bless you. Have a great week. Have a Merry Christmas. And don't forget we'll talk to you later. And an ornament. Please get an ornament on the tree. Please take all of them you want to. Bye-bye.